Hey folks, ET here coming at you with the weekly wrap. So let's go ahead and take a look. Tonight we are covering SPY, QQQ, and Tesla. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into the SPY options dashboard, which has some interesting things. Obviously, uh, you know, obviously we do not look at the flow right here. The worst, there was some put buying today, but we were in a slight downtrend. I wouldn't say too much, but a little bit. But the interesting thing to see is SPY deltas have flipped short well they've flipped negative which means that they are somewhat bearish so or somewhat bullish apologies so for the first time in a while we are seeing spy bullish dealer greeks build up on their deltas so that is kind of crazy to see at the it's coming near the end of this big uptrend so we will see how that plays out uh, and if and if perhaps uh, we start to get a bit a bit more of a run up and we'll look at the levels here in a few minutes which will help us see where where some potential is going just taking a quick look at its at its price distribution going into monday pretty bullish okay going into tuesday the same pretty bullish wednesday once again sorry not monday uh tuesday wednesday thursday and this would be friday uh going into four days since we have monday off so all of these are currently looking fairly bullish now i do remember they change throughout the week so check them each day so right now a swing long doesn't sound terrible terribly bad because it is lining up right here with the dealer greeks and it is showing price distributions as bullish Le leaning in again to in into our uh, dealer oi it is showing for at least tuesday pretty bullish now it does have some bearish signals going into next week after that but showing for early week it is showing it is showing a fairly a fairly bullish position over here red bars red bars are bullish so if we're looking at this you know make sure you check this each day because they do change so that is pretty interesting to see there let's go ahead and grab our what's what's the end of next week the 23rd so let's just go ahead and look a week ahead and see what see what our gamma looks like going into the 23rd biggest negative bar is 430 and a 440 and a 440 negative bar close to its size with a 435 kind of in between so uh we're we're above 440 currently and that's pretty interesting to see now these can change but looking at this it really shows a range from 430 to 4 430 to 440 potentially with a little pit stop at 435 where there is a massive dark pool i think so we're pretty close to that i think it's closer to the 437 around here so that's interesting that doesn't correlate actually extremely well with what we're seeing up here so that would be interesting to see but it does correlate with the dealer oi a little bit so some mixed signals there but once again spy has been just crazy so not shocked we see a few mixed signals if we go ahead and check some other filters let's just see what it looks like early in the week see what see what the 20th looks like 441 is our is, a, is our largest bar with 448 being our next largest bar so that's interesting to see there as well as far as our gex and vex profile price is supported right now around 447 450 so that does lean into maybe a bullish early week for tuesday sorry i keep saying monday but it's tuesday because we're off on monday so that does lead into a slightly bullish week for tuesday which is interesting to see or a slightly bullish day at least because price price is you know below this right now and could come back up still supported around 450 so that's the end of that let's go ahead and take it take a look at its levels will all be darned if it doesn't have a gamma all the way up to 450. One of my sort of main rules that I follow is, is if there is gamma placed somewhere, uh, I take a look to not go too far against it if we are near it, if that makes sense. So we're currently sitting at 439 right now. We have price support up to right around here on this 446 gamma level. And we have some gamma up to 450. I'm not saying the market runs there next week, but it is entirely possible for it for it to get there at some point. And we've seen stranger things happen because just a month ago, I felt like I was saying there's gamma around 440. I wonder if price is going to get there. And sure enough, it sure did. So that's the levels that we're kind of looking at this week. We have some large dark pools. There's that 435. We had a pretty big print today right around here at 442.50 which was which was sort of the spot that we couldn't pass throughout the day uh, as we as we went along price just continued to, to pull away from it and head downwards so that was a pretty interesting interesting day we didn't move that much you know 
off, uh, once we opened, we didn't move a whole lot. We got this big candle, a rejection off our 443 gamma, and then we just never really got to revisit anything again. Kind of a tough day uh, with movement-wise, at least on SPY. There were some decent plays in there. I got a couple very small wins, a couple of losses as well, uh, doing a few stupid things and not following my own rules. But end of the day, very slightly green trading other things, luckily. All right, so that is SPY Force. Let's go ahead and jump into QQQ and see what it looks like. It's starting to thin out put-wise or call-wise. There's not as much flow going on, right? There are still some th some heavy 360s going into next week, so that's interesting to see. Once again, we don't pay attention to its net flow <coughs> very much. It is still negative or positive, I mean, so showing so showing bearish potential. So that is interesting to see. It does not match SPY currently. All right, so so it still isn't matched up, even though it's been running up a little bit. Going into Tuesday's price distro, showing some positivity though, even though even though the deltas the delta buildup is still showing a little bit of downside. Okay, going into Wednesday and Thursday, so so we, we get it we get into Thursday and it gets a little bit more gets a little bit more bearish, but there's still some pretty sizable bullish lines here, and then to end the week. Still looks a little bit choppy, a little bit rangy if there, but it looks to be more bullish than bearish in that. Checking out its dealer OI going into Monday, it's slightly bearish. Tuesday, I'm sorry, going into Tuesday, slightly bearish. Wednesday, slightly bearish. Thursday and Friday are slightly bullish. So that doesn't necessarily uh, match up with everything, but it does match up with the price distro just a little bit as we saw a little bit of choppiness and slight bearish positions. Going into next week's, the end of week's expiry for Friday. Let's just go ahead and see where our gamma is. Largest gamma is still sitting at 360. All right, that's pretty interesting to see as 360 is around the place where price is supported. So what this would lead me to believe with some negative deltas and some slightly bearish dealer OI and some price distribution that seems that seem mixed, anything too far over 360, uh, maybe maybe a short. Maybe a swing short for me. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to really look into it. Let's go ahead and look at Tuesday just to see what what the opening of the week looks like, to see if there's too much change there. Still about 360 with our next biggest negative bar being at 371. Let's go ahead and take a look at its levels. It is capped out around 375, which is still a nice nine dollar move from there. So it's interesting to see we're seeing a lot of mixed signals on some of these tickers. Uh, it had it, it once again had a day just exactly like spy, just about had a nice had a nice little pop to start the day, and then it just started just started to slowly go down, but didn't move a whole actual lot unless you caught the actual top there. It's still got some big moves down, just like spy does, as you can see. And what's crazy is is the, is this 360 here, you know, just sitting here. It's got a there's so much positive gamma here that it could repel from right so if it hits here it could repel hits here it could repel it could also if it gets below repel downwards but that would i think a binary event is going to have to take us there or maybe no event at all and the market just uh crashes a little bit or goes down quite a bit over a few day period to to cool off so that's qqq let me point out real quick that spy these are there are so many gamma levels on the way down so much so much support if you will but there are some pretty sizable ghost zones going down and then the biggest one is from 415 currently all the way down to 400 so i'm not saying price goes there <laughs> i'm still feeling that uh that the data is pointing towards we see some more upside first but i will play the week as it goes and i am willing to be 100 percent incorrect there and play the data that shows up okay so let's move into our last one for the day before we do our monday night video for the week ahead which will be some random tickers tesla been an absolute juggernaut lately if you are in the trading discord uh, i have uh, i did alert some calls here for mid july into 300 which i am still mostly in i scaled some at 50 percent we caught a really 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 good position and some really good timing there so that was interesting for all of us anybody that took it as well up even with even with it's a bit a little bit of chop and it's a little bit of not running super super hard Tesla is still pointing extremely far towards 
the potential rip upwards right now with its deltas. Its its percent its win percents are great. It really is kind of crazy to see. It's one of my favorite Dealer Greeks build ups to play. Obviously, I try to exercise patience. <coughs> Excuse me, I try to exercise patience in my entries. But at the same time, uh, when I start to see these pull, I start to genuinely think maybe it's time to long or short Tesla. So that is that is what we're looking at for its Dealer Greek. Let's go ahead and go into its price distro. Going into Tuesday, here we are, pretty even, kind of choppiness. Okay, Wednesday, look, I finally got Tuesday right. Wednesday is showing some more push upwards. Thursday, quite bullish. And Friday, quite bullish. So that's interesting to see. That is a, some crazy bullish positioning. Although our dealer OI doesn't necessarily match up. It's showing for the week. Showing for the week a slightly bearish position for dealer OI. And then going into the next week is, is where it's showing is where it's showing more of a bullish position. Showed some a bullish position this week, and uh, we did have a nice run up for a decent portion of the week if we're following there. Alright, let's just let's take a look at what next week's gamma brings. <laughs> Interesting to see our largest current gamma pull is at 250, and our largest current gamma reject is at 277, or repel, if you will. It doesn't necessarily mean mean reject. So this is a bit of a wall right here that we're looking at. So 275 could be tops for the week unless something crazy happens. And with 292 being being its its biggest its uh, its its smallest kind of tail here, if it somehow manages to pass that. This wall here could be a nice topper though. So if it reaches this early in the week, right? Or if it decides to head down early in the week, like it showed, like some potential there. If it's if it if it decides to head down a little bit early in the week, then maybe. Maybe I add to my longs up to the two, up to the 275, and then scale some more there, which which is sort of how I would play it if I were looking at it. I'd look I'd look for a pull to one of these, and then add to my long swing there, or perhaps just roll out and add on what I'm currently swinging, which is the 721 300s currently. <clears throat> Crazy to see. Looks like Tesla price is supported no matter where it is, which is kind of interesting to see. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Uh, at our next week going in for 6:30 to see if there's any change in the gamma. So 265 gets a little gets a little bit bigger with the next one being that 250. As you can see, these this, these gamma walls here shrink a little bit going into that week, and we start to see some bigger bars towards that 300. And let's just go ahead because I'll, I'll show you how I do it and how I start to plan out these swings as I just start to check to see where these things are and where those walls are. So this one's really just about the same. Uh, is as next week doesn't show a whole a whole 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 lot of movement. It's got a decent pull to 265, 270, and then another gamma wall here at 300 if it decides to run up there. Just a slight one with its biggest negative being to 230. If some things change, we'll just go out one more week to see. And as you can see, we still see a 225 biggest pull there. And then my goodness, uh, the next one is 290, which is where I'd really like to see it go to finish my cons. Once again, price is supported pretty well. Let's take a look at its levels really quick, okay? And we'll just go ahead and take a look and see. It's just resting here at this 260. A lot of positive levels, negative levels up to, towards the upside. I really like to see these big ghost zones, these breaks. If they can get above and consolidate a little bit, right, if we can get above and consolidate and then repel upwards, same with, same with this, right? It's a three dollar one. And then what's crazy to see is its current ghost zone, if it passes 275, is all the way to that 300 magnet that I am eyeing. So that is how I'm playing this. Uh, I got we got in early uh, about a, uh, probably about 25 to 30 dollars ago. So that is a pretty helpful move. So it's, those things are going well contract wise, uh, and we still have a month on them for everybody that was in the trading Discord. I do have a channel in there, and I talk about my trades. Not every single one is a winner. But there are occasional ones. There are occasional ones uh, that I throw out that happen to be that way. All right, so that is Tesla for you. <laughs> now I want to kind of go into something real quick. Just a tip at the end, and I tweeted about this earlier in the week. Live options flow. Okay, so first things first. If you look up here in this, you can go ahead and subtract anything you don't want to see. I always remove Tesla and Nvidia. They get too much heat. They are constantly being bought, and it just litters. Absolutely litters my my feed with things but what i do is i like to click bot above ask volume over i and non-etf sometimes i'll hit non-spreads just depend on how i feel 
and then I will just kind of go through and I will see what is happening uh, and what I and what I see that might interest me. What I'm usually looking for is some very fairly sizable. You get these orange, these orange or yellow numbers, and I start to look into these, and I will just start to pull. I will start to pull up their charts. I'll pull up their deltas. Right, quick research to see if there's anything interesting on them. Right, I don't even know what this ticker is, but somebody bought somebody bought some short-term stuff today, which is kind of crazy. So that might be that might be a little bit a little bit of a, a hedge or maybe a dividend thing going on. This one here was interesting, an awful lot uh, for CHPT. So I'm not I'm not sure what that's looking about. But this is this is where I start to form uh, some thesis on some plays. There was a pretty good GE call flow earlier that I followed through on. There was a meta one actually that uh, hurt me. The, the, there were some meta puts early that I followed and I should not have. I got stopped out almost immediately. So no, but I did not do any research. I did not look at look at much. I just kind of blindly bought, which is against my rules. Luckily, I was super super light and it was a lotto, but that lotto hit a 20% loss almost immediately. But with these is where I start to look and I start to draw out levels and do things. And I think that's an interesting thing that some people kind of sleep on. There's Crocs. If you've ever been to our live stream, somebody's always asking about that thing. Uh, this is something that I, that I like to look at to help me form a thesis. I use Flash as well to look for divs. And, you know, I'll take some of these and I'll put them into a watch list. And then I'll go, I'll go into Scanny uh, or Flash and I'll see if there's any signals for them. I'll go into Dark Pools and see if there's any signals for them. You know, if you see, if, if you see something you like, it's always good to take a bit of a look at it. So this is, this is just a, a, a pro tip for, the, for using the platform. Using this live flow, these above asks usually show a little bit of urgency. They are not blind buys, as I, as I told you earlier, because the meta ones that I bought did not work out for me. It's just a, it's it's not a signal to buy or sell necessarily. It's just data for you to parse to check to see if there is something behind it that might that might be interesting to you. So if you just grab blind things, uh, you may not you may not win out of it. But if you do a little bit of research and check its step in scanning, check the signals it has, look through all of its different things in dark pools, and check its deltas and its gex and vex profile. You might start to see some more. So there's that tip. Hope everybody has a great weekend. I will see you Sunday night most likely for the week ahead. Everybody have a good weekend and go get that Oprah money.